would you say that you sort of see yourself more as the more as a producer first and then sort of a musician or would you say it's a, a marriage of the two that has sort of worked well for you um it's really a, a combination and i i think part of the um the the, the sort of uh, stretching of the uh, categories is is due to the fact that that almost all people in the music industry now really are involved to some degree in something that is not their title because mm. um, you know almost all musicians have home studios so they know a bit about equipment and engineering and almost all producers play music or a lot and a lot of them compose and they know about engineering and lots of engineers are musicians so mm. it's um <clears throat> and also because what an instrument is now includes a fair bit of electronics for mm. Mm. Um, you know all those boundaries are kind of blurred and the other thing is that because Composing is not somebody sitting down at a piano and then writing out ideas anymore, mostly. Mm. It's more trying to record things. So the, the compositional process and the recording process have kind of blended into one. Mm. Mm. And um, so going back to, to the, the new album, um, the people that you worked with, was that sort of a, um, a choice that you had, that these were people that you had actually approached uh, for the project? Um, it was very much an act of desperation. Where I had um, a really tight time schedule to do the music for the film. And so um, <clears throat> Bob Adams, who plays uh, bass on the, on the album, mm -hmm. he's a local jazz musician, and he recommended a few people. Mm -hmm. And I had people come over and um, got them to play things, some of which, some of them didn't work out, but uh, the ones that did made it to the album. Mm -hmm. And they're great musicians. So it's a really, really enjoyable thing to do. Sure, sure. So, so but, but why, why was there actually that, uh, that that short time frame in, in which for you to work? Was that just the way it had worked out? That's pretty standard with films. I think um, it's <clears throat> they don't really want to think about the music until they're in the middle of editing. Mm. And then um, usually they have an intense deadline. But mm. up until then, there's always been a greater emergency to deal with and so they can't really think about it until uh you know they're they're about six weeks away from finish having to finish the film mm. and i think they also they can't really tell what's musically appropriate mm. until they start editing a lot of the time mm. and so then uh they just say well we need it you know in three weeks or something mm, mm, mm. and i mean you would be pretty common Mm, yes, yes, and uh, because you you worked pretty closely with uh, with Kevin Spacey on on putting the album together, uh, was that sort of important that sort of your interpretation musically sort of matched his vision of of the movie? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. Um, I mean, I haven't done many films, but it was certainly it would seem to be incredibly important that the director be very tightly involved because mm. you know they're. They are the audience, really. That's mm. the person I have, have to satisfy. So um, it really helps if they they either know what they want or they know it when they hear it. Mm. Mm. And and there's no there's no time to uh, pussyfoot around about it and be delicate. You know, you just got to say it's working or it's not working, and we need to change it. Or or if we don't need to change it, then it's done. Let's go to the next one. Mm, mm, mm. And as I say, with with this being sort of um, Kevin's. Uh, it, uh, directorial debut. Um, what, do, do, do you sort of see yourself? Obviously, should he um, do a, a movie in the future? Would, would he? Would you be his first choice based on the work that you've done on Albina Alligator? I think um, if he felt, um, I think in terms of the way it all worked out for us, I think yes. I think you know sometimes the film very much dictates what the music should be. So um, if if he decides, you know, he needs a kind of um, a Jerry Goldsmith type score, mm -hmm. then he probably wouldn't call me. But I think, um, you know, it, often the you know the picking the composers, it's a lot like casting actors, mm -hmm. and there is no best actor. Mm -hmm. It's just you know there there are lots of great actors, and you pick the ones who are appropriate for the the, the genre and 
feeling of the film. I think that it's similar with composers. Sure. And I mean, then again, I mean, you go back to um, Flea working on the album, um, as well as having Michael Stipe and Jimmy Scott. Um, yeah. How did that marriage sort of come together? Well, um, <clears throat> Kevin wanted to have a, uh, a song for the closing credits and um, had approached Michael Stipe about singing um, over the opening credits as, as the song for the closing credits. Mm -hmm. So Michael tried it for a while, but I think was probably just too burned out because they just finished mixing that R.E.M. album. Mm -hmm. So um, he suggested doing a cover. Mm -hmm. um, and he also wasn't uh, totally comfortable singing a cover by himself and thought it might be neat to do a duet with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. uh, who he'd always been a huge fan of. Mm. And um, coincidentally, Flea had just produced a track for a compilation album of Jimmy's. And Michael and Flea were friends, so then Flea got involved. Hmm. Interesting, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of kind of just slightly uh, random, uh, coincidental. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. And as I say, with, uh, with sort of your your choices that you have, obviously, because you've um, you've delved into a lot of different areas. Um, do you sort of have you? Do you have a, a preferable medium, one that you prefer? Do you sort of see yourself doing more of this kind of work, or sort of focusing more on your on your solo career? Um, really, uh, kind of. I I really enjoy moving between composing, uh, producing, performing, and. Um, and also composing for albums and composing for films. So I'd, I'd really like to keep doing it. I mean, for a long time, people have said that my solo music sounds like film. Uh, uh, and uh, it's an enjoyable way to work. It's a very um, kind of contained type of project. Uh, and that's, that's, that's very attractive. Uh, you know, you, and, and also, you, you really learn about the emotional impact of music very directly. The only priority. Mm. But I'd like to do more of it, and I probably will. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Michael, I think I've probably taken up. I have obviously tons of questions, but um, I know your t time is tight, and uh, to say, but I, I appreciate uh, you making the time. Um, would you, as I say, you obviously need to go now, I'm sure. Yeah, I should. Okay, but um, as I say, thanks again, and apologies for the for the delay. It's unfortunate, but uh, yeah. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, and congratulations on this. I hope it's, uh, to say, I think 4AD are probably looking to you to <laughs> do wonders with this, which I think it will do on its own merit, uh, regardless of the movie. Yeah, well, we'll see. And thanks for calling in. I'm sorry, uh, I'm tight for time. No, no. If you need to follow up on it or something, I'll be back in about 10 days. Okay, okay. Um, I'll see how I go, but if, if I do, I appreciate the offer. I would, uh, I'll then uh, sort of organize that through uh, through the label here. Um, yeah. But I think we should be fine initially, but thank you. Okay, thanks Great. a lot.